Hello everyone, my name is Valdir Uri, I am a retired stenographer proofreader of the Legislative Assembly of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, a shorthand teacher and a member of the Interstano Educational Committee. It is an enormous pleasure for me to talk to you through this video. The title of this talk focus on the issue as to shorthand speed. On this video, I will give you a very brief view of the subject. The full text is available on the Interstellar website. I want to say I like to talk about shorthand speed, a subject that I care about and that I am passionate about. What is understood when we talk about shorthand speed is how many words per minute someone can write using shorthand. A good shorthand speed is around 120 words per minute. At this speed, this represents writing in shorthand, in theory, two words per second which is truly a great feat. Senhor Presidente, senhoras e senhores parlamentares, nós temos que ampliar a discussão. A tentativa de encerramento da discussão é para evitar o aumento do desgaste que é progressivo daqueles que defendem a lista aberta e o financiamento público de campanha. Eu já tive a oportunidade de vir a esta tribuna criticar o financiamento público num país em que falta dinheiro para saúde, educação, habitação, saneamento e segurança pública. Ainda assim... Just by way of comparison, according to Juvencio José Barbosa, in his book Literacy and Reading, we read at a normal speed of approximately 250 words per minute, four to five words per second. The speed of longhand versus the speed of shorthand. Shorthand is an extremely abbreviated writing. Do to the simplification and significant savings through graphical representations, it's possible to achieve great levels of speed when writing. This unique use transforms shorthand into a valuable instrument. After learning shorthand signs, and the rules of the new graphical system, shorthand, the student begins a daily and systematic training of progressive dictations to acquire speed. In this training period, listening and visual perception, mentally developing signs, motor coordination, writing on paper and transcribing shorthand outlines into longhand come into play. As the students advance in the shorthand speed training, they gain gradual conditioning that will enable them to write in shorthand at greater speeds. Training speed is a progressive, dynamic, live, full-time, continuous and individual process, demanding as a basic condition to jump from one speed to another, personal effort and involvement, as well as training and maturing at each speed level. To begin the systematic shorthand speed training dictations, it is essential that the student has learned the entire system. 
This does not mean that you cannot train small dictations, but without the need of timing the speed while learning the system. Small dictations with shorthand characters that have already been studied and written at a slower pace, if performed with criteria, may represent an excellent teaching resource and may even help preparing to train for progressive dictations that the student begins to do after learning the entire system. This is exactly the systemology that I have elected in my online shorthand course. Dictations as of the first module that have shown very good results and students have approved. Learning the system begins with moments of experience or familiarity with shorthand characters interspersed with moments of systematization and solidification through exercises and tests. Quality exercises are those that are very well dosed and in which the student observes, compares, infers, understands and repeats. These are exercises that stimulate the assimilation of shorthand characters and that, that properly build the foundations of learning the system. There are also playful and exciting exercises that generate pleasure and challenge as well as sharpen the student's interest while learning and still others that awaken in the student the desire to learn more and more. In the final report of a study published in 1969 in the United States on systems of teaching shorthand research analysis written by Joe Polis for the Technic Institute of Ruston, Louisiana, we read the following conclusions from the findings of this study there seem to be strong indication that success in shorthand as measured by achievement in shorthand dictations was significantly related to one's ability to construct accurate shorthand outlines. First, there was a significant positive relationship between the student's ability to write accurate shorthand outlines and his achievement in shorthand dictation. Second, there was a significant positive relationship between the ability of the student to write accurate shorthand outlines and his ability to transcribe the outlines. Third, there was a significant positive relationship between the ability of the student to transcribe isolated shorthand outlines and his achievement in shorthand dictation. Fourth, Competency in transcription increased 
with competency in shorthand accuracy. Irving Lesser believes that weak students in shorthand are those who have not mastered the theory of the shorthand system. Quote, Generally, the weak students in shorthand have never adequately learned the theory of the shorthand system so that they they can automatize their responses. It is unfortunate that too many of the students' shorthand notes reveal that their knowledge of the theory of shorthand is far short of what it should be. There is an imperative need to mature in each speed level. It's known that while training the patients at a given speed, the brain starts creating new neurons relative to that particular speed. This is why it's necessary to train many dictations at each speed level. When training many 20 words per minute dictations, the student gives the brain the necessary time for it to create neurons relative to the 20 words per minute speed. The same is true for each speed level the student advances to. This is so true that the non-compliance of such period required for the brain to adapt to each speed level can represent a huge obstacle with regard to the student's progress. The students that burn faces and train speeds greater than their brain capacity, exceeding what their skill, their conditioning, and their motor coordination enables them to, end up losing many words in the dictation, writing shorthand characters very poorly, and generating enormous difficulty when they try to transcribe what they have written in shorthand. In cases like this, where there is no real progress, the best strategy is to go back a few steps in order to advance. Now let's talk about the transition from one speed to another. To better understand this point related to the transition from one speed to another, we can illustrate with weights that are used for bodybuilding at gyms. Normally, people begin lifting 10 pounds for several weeks these 10 pounds will condition the arm and muscles so that they can later be able to lift 20 pounds. In this second phase, weeks are spent lifting 20 pounds. Only after the muscle is fully conditioned, strengthened and truly prepared is when 10 more pounds are added and this pattern is followed every time there is an increase in weights. We can say that the same thing happens with progressive short and speed dictations. Days and weeks need to be spent at a given speed to condition, strengthen 
and acquire motor coordination in order to obtain full capacity at that speed. Only then will five more words be added for every minute of dictation without representing an overload to the brain. Speed training should be done with full commitment and with utmost discipline. Each dictation has to be well digested. All words and brief forms that are difficult to write should be very well studied. The student cannot and should not be in a hurry to jump from one speed to another. It's essential to mature at each speed level. The amount of dictations needed to train each speed level must be taken into consideration, but the most important is the quality of the training of each dictation. To train a great number of dictations and not assimilate anything is time spent uselessly. On the other hand, digesting and deeply training each dictation. Training not only words that are difficult to write, but brief forms as well, represents an extraordinary grain with respect to short and speed. As a rule, the greater the speed, the longer the training will take to overcome it. This is because the amount of sounds to be converted into graphic codes increases proportionally. Let's make a comparison to better understand this point. In a 5 minute dictation of 20 words per minute, we give the brain a task of transforming 100 words into shorthand outlines. In a 5 minute dictation of 120 words per minute, the brain has a great and complex task, which is to transform with great speed 600 words into shorthand outlines. The difference is brutal. 120 against 600. It's easy to see that every time words are added and every time there is an increase in the speed of the dictations, the brain has a greater amount of work to accomplish. It's important to note that the act of shorthand writing involves multitasks, not only in relation to listening to the words, making the respective shorthand outlines in the brain, and through motor coordination writing them on paper, but also performing everything with ease, speed and accuracy. The use of skills is a continuous improvement process that has no end. It's necessary to always train speed in order to be a good stenographer. There is actually no point of arrival. To be able to use the shorthand skills well, it's absolutely imperative to follow a continuous improvement process that has no end.
the endless training of speed dictations, the daily drilling and the permanent enhancement of the art of shorten, all become essential conditions to achieve an excellent professional and personal performance. The stenographer who daily trains speed is continuously improving and even surpassing every day skills that have already been acquired. The motor coordination starts getting better, more accurate, more efficient and more refined. Likewise, the stenographer who daily trains speed improves concentration every day as well as the ability to hear sounds, transform them into signs and outline them fluently on paper. Every day this stenographer becomes more proficient in overcoming the challenges shorthand writing offers. Finally, we must emphasize that along with speed training, there is also training related to reading what has been written in shorthand. As a result, the habit of reading what has been written in shorthand brings not only an improvement in comprehension, but reading speed as well. E o povo brasileiro. Muito se reclama do povo brasileiro. Porém, acho que ele já conseguiu muita coisa. A rigor, o povo não podia nem dirigir bicicleta. Porém, dirige até automóvel. Não poderia passar nem do primário. Já temos doutores. Senhor Presidente, senhoras e senhores deputados, gostaria de abordar assunto de grande interesse para todos nós. As dificuldades que vivemos no dia a dia do país, especialmente pela necessidade de uma estratégia para promover a distribuição de renda aos brasileiros. O Brasil é um dos países com maior dificuldade de distribuição de renda. Thank you so very much for your kind attention.